Tune in Salam Malaysia Madani Kings for joining us. I'm News Andre. You're watching a bit of our headlines for today. So, what bracing for another increased revenue performance in 2023? Twitter's rolled out per article payment plan. Sarawak is expected to register an increase in revenue this year following a positive revenue performance over the past four years, including a record-setting highest revenue performance of 12 billion ringgit achieved by the state in 2022. Sarawak Premier Tan Sri Abang Johari Tun Oping said the figure last year had even surpassed its projected revenue and was the highest in the history of the state. He expressed confidence that there will be more development projects made possible in Sarawak with this increase in income. Kita akan mengembangkan basic economic cake kita dan seluruhnya rakyat akan dapat menikmati dari sudut pembangunan infrastruktur dan juga pembangunan bekalan air dan elektrik. Di muka itu termasuklah waterfront baru. Lagi didesain oleh engineer Abi Royston. Nah. Kita nak malah waterfront baru kita di sungai muka ini. Yang belanjanya lebih kurang 60 juta untuk semua. He added that an oil and gas company is currently studying the amount of oil and gas obtainable in the waters of Balayan. Aside from that, the Rajang Delta Development Agency, RADA, has identified 60 development projects in Muka with an allocation of 1 billion ringgit to expedite rapid development in the area. Several development projects and infrastructure upgrade works in Pasir Salak Perak have been approved. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Sahid Hamidi explained that the projects are implemented based on the needs of the local residents in order to provide them with maximum benefits. Also approved for suburban water supply projects in Anak Sungai and Maktab Rundah Sains Mara MRSM Parser Salat Building Structures Upgrade Works. Another 2 million ringgit was also approved for reconstruction of shop houses in Sobrang Pira, which were destroyed in a fire back in February. Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid said this during an Amnua Delfitri open house in Pasir Salat. On another matter, Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid, who is also Rural and Regional Development Minister, announced that the road and bridge linking Bagan Dato to Kampung Sujagub would be open to the public on 31st of May. He hoped that the project will benefit the Rakyat not only in terms of better infrastructure, but also development of the economy and people in Kampung Gajah in Pasir Sala, Bagandato parliamentary constituencies. Last 11th of April, the Public Works Department said in a statement that the opening of the road and bridge had been postponed to the end of May instead of the Adil Fitri period. Prospective pilgrims are advised to repair themselves accordingly before going for Hajj as it is a spiritual journey that requires physical, mental and emotional strength in addition to the proper knowledge on the deed. This is to ensure that the Hajj process is carried out smoothly and properly. 
Perlis region, Juanku Swet Faisuddin Putra Jamululail, took the opportunity to extend His Highness congratulations to everyone who has been called to perform Hajj this year. His Highness also expressed gratitude to Tabung Haji for their efforts in holding courses in physical and online form as a part of preparations for all prospective programs. His Highness said this is an event held at Dewan Ilmu University of Malaysia, Perlis Unimab, Pauh Putra. The Rubber Production Incentive, IPG for smallholders, has been activated in Peninsula Malaysia, Sabah and Sarawak starting first until 31st of May based on production in April. In light of lower rubber prices, the Malaysian Rubber Board, MRB, has activated the incentive to ensure the well-being smallholders is taken care of by supporting the pricing. The current average price at the farm stage for cub lum or scrap rubber in April is 2 ringgit and 35 cent per kilogram in Peninsula Malaysia and it is 95 cent in Sabah and Sarawak. The most active IPG for cub lum and latex in Peninsula Malaysia is at a rate of 35 cent per kilogram for 50 percent dry rubber contracts KGK and 70 cent per kilogram 400 percent KGK. Meanwhile, in Sabah and Sarawak, it is 75 cent per kilogram for 50 percent KGK and one ring at 50 cent for 100 percent KGK. As for latex, the rate stands at 90 cent per kilogram for 100 percent KGK. Selangor Ku Homes may be offered to residents of Kampung Kuskan Tambahan, Serendah in Batangkali. This came after they were instructed to vacate the area last Saturday. Sebagaimana kenyataan yang telah dikeluarkan oleh Pejabat Tanah dan Daerah, saya kena meneliti semula sebab ada sebahagian daripada penghuni-penghuni di kampung tersebut telah bersedia menerima tawaran gratis duty yang telah ditawarkan oleh pihak pemaju. Dan dalam pada masa yang sama, ada yang tidak mahu dan yang tak mahu ni kita akan tawarkan rumah selanguku lah, iaitu berbaki 12 orang. The state government is also prepared to become a mediator to the residents and company representative to ensure this matter can be solved properly. Recently, some 60 residents of Kampung Kuskan Tambahan handed over a memorandum to the Selangor Ministry Basar after receiving an eviction notice a day before Hari Raya. Six people narrowly escaped death when a tree fell onto the cars near the entrance of the MRR2 Expressway heading to Ampang during a storm yesterday. According to a spokesman for the Operations Centre of the Kuala Lumpur Fire and Rescue Department, JBPM, the incident involved three men and three women in three cars, a Produa Alza, Produa Maivi and Proton Exora. He said JBPM received an emergency call at 3.19pm and dispatched a fire engine with eight personnel from the Sungai Bersi Fire and Rescue Station to the scene. He said all the victims were freed from the cars and were safe. He further explained that firemen, together with personnel from the Malaysian Civil Defence Rose and Kuala Lumpur City Hall, carried out the work of cutting and removing the fallen tree. Sambutan Hari Pekerja 2023 yang akan disempurnakan oleh Perdana Menteri yang amat berhormat Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim secara langsung dari Pusat Konvensyen Antarabangsa Putrajaya pada hari Isnin 1 Mei 2023 11.30 pagi hanya di TV1 saluran berita RTM dan RTM Clip Pekerja Pemangkin Wadah Malaysia Madan Twitter will introduce an option allowing media outlets to charge users for payroll content on a per-article basis if they want to read on occasional article. CEO of the social media platform Elon Musk said the plan would begin next month but provided no details on exact pricing or what cut Twitter would take. 
The announcement came as Musk has been struggling amid frequent controversy to make Twitter profitable. Media organizations have wrestled for years with how to formulate subscription plans to pay their operating costs, even as readers have grown accustomed to getting news free on the internet. The Musk plan raises questions about how exactly he hopes to make the micropayment approach work when others have failed. Several people posting on Twitter raise other objections. The per-article approach, they said, could encourage a flourishing of clickbait. It might favour big publishers over small ones, and it is unclear that authors, not just news groups, would see any profits. A gunman shot dead five neighbours, including an eight-year-old child, after some of them had asked the men to stop shooting a semi-automatic rifle in his front yard in Cleveland, Texas, because it was keeping the baby awake. Police were still looking for the suspect, who used an AR-15 style rifle in the shooting late on Friday. Authorities have charged Francisco Oropizza, 38, with five counts of murder and was searching for him in a nearby wooded area. Sharif Greg Capus of San Jacinto County, which is north of Houston, described a horrifying scene when authorities went to the residence after receiving a call about harassment around 11.30 p.m. Friday. The victims, aged from 8 to 40 years old, was turned from the front door to the house to an inside bedroom where two of them, both women, were found lying on top of two traumatized children who survived the massacre. All the victims had been shot from the neck up, almost execution style, basically in the head. The police found several others in critical condition from multiple gunshot wounds. The Honduran Foreign Minister, Enrique Rina, called on Twitter for the gunman to face the full weight of the law. Four planes on bombing raids drew heavy fire of a Khartoum as fighting between Sudan's army and paramilitaries entered a third week with the United Nations chief warning the country was falling apart. More than 500 people have been killed since battles erupted on 15 of April. They have agreed to multiple truces but none has taken hold as the number of dead civilians continues to rise in chaos and lawlessness grip Khartoum, a city of 5 million people where many have been greeted in the homes lacking food, water and electricity. The violence has killed at least 528 people and wounded 4,599, the health ministry said Saturday, but these figures are likely to be incomplete. The United Nations said about 75,000 have been displaced by the fighting in Khartoum and the states of Blue Nile, North Kordofan, as well as the western region of Darfur. The fighting has also triggered a mass exodus of foreigners and international staff. On Saturday, a ferry with around 1,900 evacuees arrived at a Saudi naval base in Jeddah after crossing the Red Sea from Port Sudan in the latest evacuation to the Kingdom by sea. The Saudi Foreign Ministry said they were among almost 4,880 people who have been brought to safety in the Kingdom. Meanwhile, the first Iranian evacuees to escape the Sudan conflict through Saudi Arabia arrive in Jeddah, relief that their country has settled its differences with the regional rival. The 65 Iranians were among about 1,900 people on the latest boat to arrive from Port Sudan. Iran and Saudi Arabia agreed to end a seven-year diplomatic rupture on 10 of March, and four Iranian diplomats were on hand when the latest ship arrived at the King Faisal naval base in Jeddah. Honestly, never thought we would be coming to Saudi when we're going to be evacuating from there because of our nationality. But, you know, thankfully, they really helped us out. They put their differences aside, they worked together, and uh, they saved lives, basically. The process was amazing. Like, it was more than our expectation. It was beyond our expectation. Saudi Arabia and Iran have not yet opened embassies after their diplomatic agreement, but Hassan Sarnegar Aburkoy, one of the Iranian diplomats waiting at the base, said his government was grateful for the humanitarian cooperation shown by the Saudi authorities. Tens of buses were seen lining up on the Arjun Egypt Sudan border crossing as the waiting times increase with the rising of influx of Sudanese fleeing the fighting. 
Satellite images showed congestion of trucks and buses lining up in different directions as they prepared to cross the border. Israeli police dispersed protesters and arrested a handful after the weekly protests on Saturday. Scuffles broke out after the end of the protest that was attended by tens of thousands of Israelis against the plans by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's nationalist religious government to push through curbs on the judiciary they see as an additional threat to democracy. One Colombian migrant was wounded in a rock-throwing exchange amid clashes between police, Peruvian citizens and migrants who are blocking the road that leads to the border with Chile. Tension is ongoing as migrants are still stranded after leaving Chile and not allowed to cross into Peru. A huge fire broke out at a fuel depot in Sevastopol, the main port in Moscow and ex Crimea, with authorities saying it was the result of a drone attack. The fire size was around 1,000 square meters. Sevastopol is home to Russia's Black Sea fleet and has been hit by a series of drone attacks since the Kremlin's Ukraine offensive launch last year. Champions League final, that and more next in sports. Nak tengok saya baca berita bersama saya Safi Sali dalam Stadium RTM 29 dan 30 April ini. RTM teman setia. Malaysia's professional pair, Ong Yi Sin, to Yi Yi storm into the final of the Badminton Asia Championships 2023 after a hot sport victory over Japan's Takuro Hoki Yugo Kobayashi. Yu Sin Yi, rank number eight in the world, beat the four seeded Takuro Yugo 21 16, 26 24, and 50 minutes at the Sheikh Rashid bin Hamdan Indo Hall of Al Nasser Club UAE. The Malaysians were dominant in the first game, but it was neck and neck in the second game until the Japanese pulled away to an 18-14 lead. However, the Malaysians fought back and leveled the score at 18-18, which saw Iyi raising his left knee after failing while returning a short. Yu Sin Iyi eventually took the game two days before winning to register only their second win in eight matches against the Japanese pair. In the men's doubles final tonight, Yusin E will meet India's Sadwit Sairaj Ranki Reddy Chirakshetti. Badminton Asia has appointed Tansri Mohamed Nurza Zakaria as its honorary president for the 2023 till 2027 term. Tansri Mohamed Nurza's appointment was announced by the newly elected Badminton Asia president Kim Jong Su from South Korea at its annual general meeting yesterday. At the AGM, BAM General Secretary Datuk Kenny Goh was elected the Badminton Asia Secretary General. In a statement, BAM said Tan Sri Muhammad Nurza's appointment is in recognition of his extensive service and contribution to the sport in Asia. He is the first Malaysian to assume the position of the honorary president. BM Deputy President Datuk V. Subramaniam hailed the appointment and congratulated Tan Sri Muhammad Nurza on behalf of the BAM Council and all its affiliates. Datuk V. Subramaniam said the BAM President's extensive knowledge and advice will benefit Badminton Asia, including in areas of marketing and sponsorship, event organisation as well as development. Urawa Red Diamonds claim a one-all draw with Al Hilal at Riyadh's King Fayyad International Stadium to secure a slim advantage over defending champions ahead of the second leg of the Asian Champions League final next weekend. Shinzo Kuroki cancelled out Salim Al Dausari's first half opener for the host stand. With the away goals rule in use, the Japanese side will be marginal favourites to claim the title when the teams meet again at Saitama Stadium next Saturday. A crowd in excess of 53,000 turned out, as Hilal said their sights on 
On to the next update, Barcelona trashed 10 men Real Betis 4-0 on Saturday to move a step closer to winning La Liga for the first time since 2019. Andres Christensen, Robert Lewandowski and Rafinha struck for Barca. They come new with Guido Rodriguez netting a late on goal to round off the rate. Xavi Hernandez brought Christensen into the starting lineup after injury and he made a quick impact on his return. Rafinha whipped in a vicious ball, which Ronald Haruja narrowly missed, but Christensen followed in behind to power ahead of home. But this was set back further when defender Edgar Gonzalez was dismissed for two bookings after half an hour. Lewandowski pounced soon after to net his 19th league goal, and three minutes later, Rafinha struck the third. Rodriguez deflated in Ansu Fati's cross as Barcelona added a fourth goal in the 82nd minute. Almost 90,000 home supporters were also treated to 15-year-old Lamin Yamal's debut in the final stages and the winger came close to scoring with a shot repel by Ru Silva. It took a third set tiebreak before Stefano Tsitsipas could complete a dramatic comeback against a resurgent Dominic Thiem at the Madrid Open on Saturday. For Real Madrid as the champions rush Almeria 4-2 to cut the gap on La Liga leaders Barcelona to eight points. The French striker climbed to 17 goals in La Liga this season, one behind Barcelona's Lodonski, the division's top scorer. Benzema netted his treble in the first half and Rodrigo added the fourth early in the second for Madrid, while La Corzo and Lucas Robertson struck for the visitors 15. Benzema's strikes helped him move to two goals ahead of former Madrid attacker Hugo Sanchez to become the fourth top scorer in La Liga of all time on 236 goals. It took a third set tiebreak before Stefano Tsitsipas could complete a dramatic comeback against the resurgent Dominic Thiem at the Madrid Open on Saturday. The Greek dropped the first set 3-6 but kept in a match with a stellar serving performance making 39 straight first serves starting from late in the first set through to early in the third. His commanding serve led him to race through the second set at 6-1 in less than 30 minutes. Tiem then saved five break points in the third set to go up 6-5, ultimately leading to a third set tiebreak to decide the match. The Australian was up 3-1 in the tiebreak before Tsitsipas rode back to hold him off and win the match 3-6, 6-1, The number four seed will face Argentine Sebastian Weiss in the third round. Elsewhere, world number three Daniel Medvedev saw off Andrea Vavasori 6-4, 6-3 to reach the third round. Vavasori battled his way past Sandy Murray in the first round but could not kill another former world number one in the Spanish capital. The Italian, rank 164th, held his own against the second seed but eventually succumbed even though his serve and volley game troubled Medvedev. The Italian forced two break points in the first game, but Medvedev held and the players stayed on serve until the 2021 US Open winner broke for 6 4 to take the first set. There was a brief rain delay before the second set, in which Medvedev broke to love 4 5 3, sealing a fine return game with a drop shot, which left Vavasuri scrambling. The Russian, who often struggles on clay, clinched victory when Vavasuri sent a backhand long. Mexican Sergio Perez blasted past Ferrari's Charles Leclerc to win Formula One's first sprint of the season in Azerbaijan, while Red Bull team made Max Verstappen finish a free third in a damaged car. Leclerc, who started on pole position and finished second to more than double his points tally, was the first driver other than Perez to beat double world champion Verstappen on track this year. Former Azerbaijan Grand Prix winner Paris kept out of trouble, slotting into second place behind Leclerc at the start, and then taking the lead on lap 8 with the benefit of drag reduction, DRS before pulling away. Although the sprint was only a 100km dash, the Mexican became the first F1 driver to win more than once around the Baku street circuit. 
A virtual safety car was triggered early on when Yuki Tsunoda hit the wall and his Potori shed a rear tyre that rolled away down the track while the Japanese continued on a damage rim. The top eight drivers scored points in the 17-lab, 100km sprint that now stands alone from Sunday's main race. Leclerc will again start on pole for that Grand Prix, the fourth of the campaign. Sukansi Kemboja 2023 Skuad bawah 23 tahun negara kini menggalas cabaran bagi memburu ibu segalpingan. Rabu 3 Mei saksikan perlawanan bola sepak Malaysia bertemu Laos 8 malam di saluran OK dan saluran sukan RTM. Saksikan juga secara penstreaman langsung di RTM Click. Exclusive hanya di RTM. Dalam kita membangunkan aplikasi yang memberi kesejahteraan kepada negara, ada yang menyalahgunakannya. Sejak kebelakangan ini, terdapat peningkatan ketara dalam penyebaran maklumat atau berita palsu yang boleh menimbulkan kekeliruan dan kegusaran di kalangan masyarakat. Ancaman berita palsu tanpa verifikasi sumber, fakta dan maklumat memberi impak serta implikasi negatif kepada rakyat dan negara. Sebarang penyebaran berita palsu akan dikenakan tindakan undang-undang serta didakwa mengikut Seksyen 505 Kanun Kesiksaan dan Seksyen 233 Akta Komunikasi dan Multimedia 1998. Denda maksimum RM50,000 atau penjara tidak melebihi satu tahun atau kedua-duanya dan juga denda selanjutnya setiap hari kesalahan berjumlah RM1,000. Bersama, cegah berita palsu. Sebar fakta, bukan dusta. Tidak pasti, jangan kongsi. Alright, that concludes today's edition of Updates at Noon in a Top Story. Sarat Racing for another increased revenue performance in 2023. Do tune in to Malaysia tonight later this evening on Saluran Bridge RTM. Till then, I'm Nur Zamri. Thank you for watching and have a pleasant evening.